What's up, Movie Jewish on fans? It's me again, I'm back. And, uh, hopefully, I'm going to finally finish watching all the, um, Schmodown matches from the last couple of weeks, which I've missed. I still have a couple more to go, but I'm getting there. I'm starting to really catch up uh, to all the ones from uh, last week, and then I'm going to start the ones from this week, leading up to Collision on this Saturday, as of the recording of this video. This one is between Jesse Swift and Jacob Whitnaben in um, Inner Geekdom. Obviously, uh, Jacob Whitnaben came into the uh, to the IG division, not really having the best debut match, and that's being generous. Jesse Swift having a slightly better, slightly better, slightly better uh, showing in his debut match against Amaru Moses, but uh, still nothing too stellar. And again, I'm, I'm being generous here, but uh, yeah, I, I, I like both these guys, and I'm, I'm I really want to see both these guys improve because the IG division is my personal favorite division. It's the division I t usually tend to do the best at. And uh, fun fact, I uh, had an IG match yesterday on John Roca's Patreon, which we'll just watch the match and see uh, if I won or lost. But uh, uh, sign, sign up to the John Roca Patreon, you know the drill. And uh, well, uh. So yeah, like I said, this is the IG match, so I will, will be participating in this time. Unlike most uh, Shmodown reactions, I'm actually going to put in all the effort uh, I have into this one. Now, I have heard from people who have watched this, that this was, a, this was a bit of a rough one, with a lot of really tough questions, but obviously since I haven't seen it yet, I, can, I can't really know if that's true or not, because what is rough for some people in IG might not be rough for me in IG and what is considered easy for people in singles and teams is a rough day at the office for me. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, I, I'm wearing my uh, quirky Mercs uh, hoodie because I'm representing uh, the Mercs and uh, my, my favorite faction and I'm rooting for JC Swift to win. So here we go. everyone and welcome back to the movie again. trivia schmodown alongside noted author of why we love star wars ken knapsack i am merely mark baby carrots ellis and ken there's a Wonderful. reason i bring up star wars or i could have said lord of the rings or harry potter because it is the world of inner geekdom where our schmodown travels take us today jesse the jackal swift taking on jacob the wonder Whitney Ben, how do you see this one playing out? Man, I gotta tell you, first of all, I love uh, being here for the Inner Geekdom. This is where your decades of knowledge and being bullied on the on the playground for knowing everything about GoBots finally pays <laughs> off. I love this Go division. Bots. We got two great competitors today, but both of them, Mark, are hungry. They want a win. They need a win. They are here not just to have fun, they're here to move ahead. And representing the Quirky Mercs is the Jackal who gave Amaru Moses all he could handle in his debut match. Came up a little short, so he's looking to get over that hump today. By contrast, with a guy like Whitney Bin, who is playing on behalf of the usual suspects, looking to help that faction climb in the rankings. We've seen it time and time again around this time of year. If you get that one win, you just need a little momentum to kick you towards those tournaments and possibly make a run for the faction championship. For a look as to how we got here today, Day. Now we throw it to another killer promo. You blew it. This was our shot. This was my shot. Look, man, bottom line, you're, you're a, loser. a loser. I never signed a contract. To be honest, to say that my last match was a failure is frankly an understatement, and I own that. You see, the Suspects is what I believe to be the best faction in the league, and they deserve better. I, I know that this is not anyone's ideal first match, but there have been so many players, great players in the history of the Schmodown, who have had matches they'd love to forget. So it's all about getting that next match under his belt, getting his feet wet, like he said, that's what today was. I know he's got a lot more in him than just this match. <laughs> oh, hey guys. What's going on? It's the Jackal. Uh, I got a match coming up. 
finally. It's, I mean, I, I haven't been waiting for it. I got, I got a life and stuff. You guys remember inner Geekdom player Jesse Swift? He played in the free for all. He played at the beginning of the season against Amr Moses. Yes, but nobody's seen him since. We haven't been able to get Jesse a match since the beginning of the year. Um, <laughs> I, so, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's been a little while since I shot a promo. It's a new year, it's a new IG, and I'm proud of the real rejects for toughing it out and doing their best. But I gotta say, uh, I'm gonna be the heavy hitter for the Mercs. So, Jacob Whitman, you're going down. I was humbled, and now I'm motivated. See, a wise man once said this, the greatest teacher failure is. is. There's no more pageantry. Master There's no Yoda. more theatrics, and I have no more distractions. It's just you and me. Today, Jesse is gonna beat with Nabin. Today, Jesse is about to show the Mercs do have a commendable inner geekdom player. There's eight factions in this league, but there's only one faction Despite all your besmirching, all your walking? smack talk, there's one faction that is holding half the belts in the league. I, as well as the rest of my team, is cut from a very well, more than particular half, cloth. The cloth the team's of collectors, the because we collect gold. And what's over the horizon? The inner geekdom belt. Today, he has taken the win from Whitnaben. Strap in, Jesse, you got this, bro. See, this whole time I've been telling everybody why the wonder is all they've been waiting for. Well, Swift, today you're about to find out why. Corruption or swag? Get ready, baby. That tournament's coming around the corner and the jackal's hungry. And, you know, Ken, that's one of the reasons why it's such a joy to call these particular kind of matches when you're talking about the quirky mercs and the usual suspects. You get a heavy dose of Koi Jandrew. You get a lot of Sam Levine. And the folks at home love him. Yeah, absolutely. Koi brings energy and smarts and statistics. Sam brings Sam, angst man. that only a Cub fan can have, but no, also a lot of knowledge of the skills, the rules, and how to win. The managers can always make a difference, and these two definitely make differences. For Cubs fans, it's always 2016. All right, the Jackal and the Wonder about to hit the stage. Ken, are you ready to go? Absolutely. I am ready to do this. Then we turn it over to the golden throat of Christian Harloff. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen it's, it's time, time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first. first. He is unranked in the inner geekdom division with a record of no wins and one, one defeat. defeat. Representing his manager, Sam Levine, and the, the usual, usual suspects. suspects. This is Jacob the Wonder, Wonder Whitman. What's going on? And there is the Wonder Good to see you again, sir. Tough outing in your inaugural Schmodown debut. You took on Moose Haas, who played tremendously on his way to a TKO. So in your work with your manager, That's Sam cool. Levine, with your study, how do you make sure that you have a better fate befall you this time out? Honestly, a big thing that I'm doing this time is I'm just really making sure that I go in this you know, really even, really, really, really chill, and just do the best we can with what we got. He does look very relaxed, Ken. Yeah, first yeah, of all, I, I, I don't come around these parts a lot. Time. Did you uh, lose to Moose Haas, match. the pitcher who won 100 ball games for the Brewers and really the A's? That's a different conversation to have all the time. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Jacob, you look calm, collected. You look like you're about to break into a cover of your body as a wonderland. How do you feel really? Are you This chill, is this an act? Don't give away the secrets, I guess. But I'm impressed the way you just look so ready to come in today. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just life's been good lately, and I'm just... Uh, not letting anybody come my vibe, so I'm ready to go against Swift. Ready to go against the Swiffer. Uh, currently in the faction standings, only a few points separating the usual suspects from the quirky mercs. How does you or your manager feel about going up against a Koi Jandrew opponent like the Jackal? What does it mean to possibly get a win against the quirky mercs in particular here today, Jacob? Uh, I mean, that's the goal, isn't it? I mean, I know that Koi has been working hard with all of his players, and uh, you know, I can't, I'm, I can't uh, 
I, 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 have, I have no disrespect. Like, I have all the respect in the world for him and his faction. But at the end of the day, it's like uh, I, I've been waiting for this match for a while. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to let that phase me. Uh, I, I believe in Sam as a manager. Uh, I believe uh, in my team. I love the suspects, and uh, I'm ready to play. All right, then it's time to meet his opponent. His opponent, also unranked in the Inner Geekdom division with a record of zero ends and one defeat, representing the Quirky Marks and his manager, Koi Jandru. This is the Jackal, Jesse Swift. Oh, was that was that today? What was who was it again again? Whit Whitney Ben? Um, what, who was the? Oh, I almost forgot the division. How you guys doing? Let me just get. I got books. I got notes. I gotta get this out of here. Oh, it's got uh, today's a lot of ass whooping will be brought to you there. by Salt Cat Soap. <laughs> Shout out to William Bibiani for supplying and green that. Is the color of How's everyone doing today? I'm excited to get going on this. Uh, we're good, Jesse. Thanks for asking. You do seem raring to go here. You lost to Amaru Moses in a nail biter. It was a three point ball game. So, like I asked Whitney, Ben, how are you going to get over that hump today for your very first W? Well, first, just with all the hot flames that uh, Jacob spit here, getting me all amped up. I'm getting a little hot. So, give me one second. Okay. Going to give him a. Oh, he's taking. Oh. I, didn't off pay, here. I didn't pay for this. Better. Nice! Oh. Okay, so ready, ready Always to go here. The um, Superman shirt. It's a, uh, it's a hump that I'm willing to go um, get over here. I don't know. Like, wasn't it? I don't know what day of the week it is. Maybe it's hump day, which means it's Superman, the day that I, I overcome this one and make my way into hopefully the IG tournament. I want to take on everybody. I'm well. The worst thing that the chairman could have done, which he does so very few things wrong, but he gave me like six months. Just sit here, marinate, be angry, study, prepare marinate again, watch some awful movies and some of my favorites. So I am prepared for this match as much as I can be. Is there a whiteboard around here? Ha, I got one. Let's He's go. got the whiteboard, Ken. Got the whiteboard. I gotta tell you what, I almost wore my Somewhere in Time shirt and I'm glad I didn't. Uh, le let me ask you this, uh, the Jackal. Uh, do you feel any pressure personally? You're coming off a close loss. Amrumos is a good player, but uh, also with your faction. We, 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 uh, the, the, I know there was a loss to Brother Loomis recently. Do you Loomis. feel double the pressure or you just, uh, you got nothing to lose at this point? That's the only pressure I can put on myself is what I'm responsible for. And I'm responsible for uh, representing the IG division on my team. And that's the only path that I can set before me. So I'm ready to go take it on. Listen, we got the Star Wars belt. We got the team's belt. We're just waiting on that singles and IG belt. So I'm here to get that third one in our hands. Quirky Mercs, number one. We are getting the faction award this year. Bad Boom! On. Look at that's what that fancy sign says behind him, inner geekdom division, and we are about to kick it off right now. Now for the rules of round number one. It is inner geekdom, gentlemen, so 10 questions will emerge from 10 different corners of Schmodown inner geekdom know-how in round one. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. Questions for the point. Ken or myself will ask it. You. you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. Name for famous Middle Earth Hobbit JTE. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, that's your repeat. Use one of your three JTE rules. You also each have one challenge that may be utilized at any point throughout the three round match. You may initiate the challenge, we'll bring in managers, and it will ultimately be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. So I'll start with the wonder. Jacob Whitney, Ben, are you ready to go, sir? Let's do it. And the Jackal, Jesse Swift, you primed and ready to go? I'm not sure if this is a Star Wars droid or not, but I am ready. That's close enough. All right, Mark's ready. I'm ready. The competitors are ready. It's time. Let's, Let's get, get ready, ready to Shmoda. The first question administered by Ken is in the category of what? Ten questions coming in. Number one is in the question of Marvel. 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 The characters Minerva, Ron Char, and Atlas appear in which 2010s MCU film? I gotta tell you, those sound like GoBots. GoBots are on my mind today. I don't know what, what it is. Mark. I was a, a big Battle Beast guy. 
The point is, we both had parents wow. that couldn't afford the real toys. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, Jacob. Pens down. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Jesse first. Did you have it? Uh, Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. That is a point for Jesse. How about Jacob? Didn't have it. I guess Infinity War. Did not have it, and so it is an early well, one lead characters for the Jackal over the Wonder as we pivot to Middle Earth. And your question for a point. What type of creature stabs Frodo on top of Weathertop Hill in the Fellowship of the Ring? And Ken, if you haven't been around Inner Geekdom in a minute, these questions are challenging. I mean, I, that sounds like lyrics to a great Springsteen song, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> It sounds like one of the Beatles tunes in the later years. Stand Frodo on top of where the top is. <laughs> Two, one. Who gets the family Bible? Let's go to Jacob. Did he have it? A Ray Ghoul, a.k.a. Wraith. That is an acceptable answer. Yeah. How about Jesse Swift? That's cool. Is, Hopefully is another acceptable answer. A Ring Wraith. There Wraith. you go for a point, and it is two to one early in the ball. I mean, game. I guess. All right. Question three speaking, is in the category Nazgul of dystopian slash time travel. Then Ring in Wraith, Back to the Future Part Three, Clara briefly gets on a train headed to what California city when she believes her relationship with Doc is over? California. Okay, I'm going to give you a series of How many cities are in California? I don't Doc know. Skirlock. Doc Holliday. On the other side of the planet. Doc Brown. Josiah Doc Scarlock. That's five, four, three, two, one. While Ken still thinks about his answer, we go to Jesse Swift. Is it San Jose? Los Angeles. It is not San Jose. Does Jacob have it for the tie? Is it San Francisco? It is San mm -hmm. Francisco. Put some flowers in I'm your hair, not Clara. Even sure Los it is tied up back in two to two. And now we go to the galaxy far, far away, but near and dear to our hearts, Star again. Wars. And your question. Which Oscar-winning actor played DJ, an underworld codebreaker, in The Last Jedi? I'm looking at the answer right now, Mark. Oh, look at that advertising. Star Wars and why we love it. Yeah. By Ken Knapsack. I have a free copy in my bathroom. Oh, uh, I should have, should have charged you for oh. that. Three, two, well, one, pens down, and we go to Jacob. Uh, Benicio, Benicio Del, Del Toro. Toro. Benicio Del Toro is correct. Did Swift have it? DJ played by BTD. BTD. We are tied up <laughs> nice. at three through four. I'm also on three, All right. by the way. Question Just number saying. five comes in the category of animated. Animated. What school subject does Mr. Incredible struggle to teach to Dash Saying they changed it in Incredibles 2. Uh, you, you, you watch that animated that's Star Wars show, you're watching The Bad Batch. How is it? I love The Bad Batch. Deep yeah. themes and the impressive foot of the Empire squishing down on the galaxy. Love it. Five, four, three, two, one. Hopefully there's space monkeys in it. Let's go to Mr. Swift. Math, math is math! Math <laughs> is indeed math. Does Jacob have it? Stole my line. Math is math. <laughs> I was more of a social studies kid myself. That is correct. Why do they it change is tied math? At four as math we go is to math. the category math is Batman. Math. And it is. Actor Lee Wallace plays the mayor of Gotham City in which Batman film? I like this question. I, when I saw this one, it was 39. It had just come out. Um, it took my four kids to see it. <laughs> Uh, you have a alternate life. You want to five, four, three, four kids. Two. The question. One. Uh, right. That is the first repeat. Uh, sorry. Who said the JT rule? Me. Uh, Jacob did. Okay. That's your first. You have two remaining categories. Batman. The question. Actor Lee Wallace plays the mayor of Gotham City in which Batman film? Uh, and you have again four children. What are their names? Le uh, legally. Um, uh, um, Emilio, Charlie, Martin, and uh, Five, Doc Skurlock. Three, <laughs> two, one. We'll get one more and name it Arkansas Dave. Let's go to Jacob. Did you have it? Is it Batman, Batman and Robin? Turns. It is not Batman and Robin. Let's see about Mr. Swift for the lead. Well, this is another Batman film. Is it Batman Begins? It is also not Batman Begins. Looking for Batman 1989. Uh, and that so block cool. was so young. So we remain tied at four to four. 
All right, so next question comes in the category of graphic novels. Graphic novels. Graphic novels. In what film version of a graphic novel will you see characters playing a video game called Ninja Ninja Revolution? Uh, Ken, I know there was some discrepancy between movies that you wanted to see and what your parents allowed you to see. Batman 1989, did you make it to a movie theater? I snuck out and told them I was going to a Bible study. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we go to Jesse. Scott Pilgrim Barbar. versus the world? Uh, Barbar is not correct. <laughs> Jacob, for a lead. Couldn't think of it. PJ Campbell mm. is weeping somewhere. It is Scott Pilgrim yes! versus the world. That's what we were looking for. Ninja Ninja Revolution. So That's we go to a different movie. world. That would be again. the wizarding world of that kid with the wand. Your question for a point. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, what is the name of the potion that allows you to take the form of someone else? I mean... It's not just called identify theftitis. What? Is that like a? <laughs> I, was say, I mean, I have some stuff in the fridge that might help us get close to this. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's see what you got, Jacob. Polyjuice potion. Yeah, polyjuice Poly potion. Polyjuice potion is delicious and accurate for a point. No, Jesse. it is not. It tastes uh, like yeah, goblin piss. Delicious. They usually gag. Polyjuice potion. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't remember this existing, so I'll take your word for it. Ken, they fell off the ladder just a little bit, but they rebound with the Wizarding World, and we stay tied 5-5. Five to five. Tied it, at 5. Was it Jacob's ladder we fell off of? <laughs> I don't think we got that high, or low, depending on what part of the movie you're in. Good reference, here we go. Number 9, number 9 is the category of heroes slash villains. Heroes and villains. Which villain from a swashbuckling franchise says the line, Life is cruel. Why should the afterlife be any different? I like that line. If when I, if and when I go, Ken, I'd like yeah. to have a cool line like that. This is like my walk off. Oh yeah, I say that every time I land in Detroit. <laughs> Which is often, given your family lives there. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we go to Jacoby. Well, no, I think we're gonna stay with Jesse. David Jones. David Jones. It is Davy Jones, Life the pirate cruel. himself. How about... Why should the left after I be on your Jones. He's on the ladder as well. It is tied at six. Ken, they just keep mm. looking at each other in the eye, throwing jabs. Neither one blinking yet. We go to your final category, which is Alien and Predator. Sometimes they're in standalone movies. Sometimes they battle each other. And your question. The famous screenwriter Damon Lindelof co-wrote which film in the Alien franchise? This is what you call a curveball with a little bit of spit on it. Yeah. I didn't see any of these pictures because there wasn't uh, droids or Wookiees in them. Well, you don't know that. I have seen them. Five, four, maybe surprise. Three, two, Seven. one. Pens down. Jacob, did you have it? Alien Resurrection? Prometheus? It is not Alien Resurrection, Jesse Swift. The Alien to the Third Power? It is not Alien to the Third Power. We're looking for Prometheus. Yes! I got Prometheus. a question. They Curveball both with missed. a little bit of spit on there. To so no honest, perfection in round one, but a nice display of, these of knowledge answers, in a variety of categories. Answers, in the world I was of considering, it is six to six. I went with tied much up more as we head in to round yeah. number two. This is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, justice. It is a virtual wheel. You'll spin it by thinking really hard. Once you settle on a category, five questions emerge from that particular round. Each question is worth two points. Unless you need multiple choice, we'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. I'm eight, We're so told I'll, I'll at that point, the value of the question so goes far. down to one. And Keep in mind, competitors, the, the stealing question, is available in round about, number two. We, we do ask that you keep your hands up where you can see question. them for the entire duration which of the round. I'm okay Ken, with Jesse Swift, introduced second, has the right, by way of tiebreaker, I, I wasn't to decide sure that if he would like to spin that wheel first or defer to his opponent. In the first Batman in that French. You know, looking at the wheel. I think that I would like to go first. Hey, man, how are we feeling? Good. There were some curveballs in there that I was like, man, that's a good question. I didn't quite find my way into that avenue of thought during my studies, but now I got something uh, prepped for the next one because you live or no, no, you win or you learn. And I learned a couple things and we're not losing. So 
We like this wheel. We, I'm glad you're going first. I'm really glad we talked about all of our prep of how to navigate this particular match because it's going exactly as we thought. It's a scrap in the first, like we discussed. Now, this wheel is where I think you're going to shine. Go in with the confidence that you have marinated for six months off after almost taking out Amaru. Go in with the confidence that you've been studying for six months and make sure you feel great about that slice. We got two spins. Let's use them if we need them. Let's be confident. Let's be certain. And overall, you're playing a great game as far as tactics, as far as actual thought process. Very impressed with gameplay. So let's just show that knowledge, man. All right, you hear that sound, Ken. We know that opponent's choice lurking. Will that be the fate <laughs> of Swift? Oh! It is opponent's Called choice. Called it out. Mark manifested it at oh, us. But Jesse, you know so much. No such this. thing. Oh, hello, boys. Hello. Uh, uh, boy, Jacob, this is that was such a good spin uh, on on your your part, I guess, from over where you're sitting. Whatever mind control you're using on the wheel, it worked. Uh, so we did discuss this. Are you yep. are you still feeling the same way? I'm feeling the same way. Uh, right. Let's uh, let's give them apes. Planet of the apes, please. Apes All right, Jesse, you have been saddled with Planet of the Apes in that glorious franchise that spans different reboots, remakes, and goes all the way back and to the 60s. Most of Ken them will are be good. asking you your questions, and Ken, at your ready, the first of five for two points. All right, here we go. In Planet of the Apes, 1968, due to helping Taylor, Zira, and Cornelius. Uh, are looking at being tried for heresy with a maximum penalty of how many years? Two years, I know it because I, like to ask for I choice, talked please. to people A, uh, five years watched the match B, and, uh, two years they revealed C, to me the answer. one year D, Still doesn't change years. the fact that I know it so, yeah, like I said, two years and I give, uh, give myself a point years. Incorrect <laughs> All right, so for a steal opportunity, Jacob, Ken is going to repeat the question and the options. In Planet of the Apes, 1968, due to helping Taylor, Zira and Cornelius are looking at being tried for heresy with a maximum penalty of how many years? It's all right. Only two years and then you'll be fine. Is it D, six? Incorrect. Looking for B, two years. Again, two I had help. All right, folks, well, as it. happens occasionally so in the movie trivia so showdown, a little bit of an oopsie. We asked the question, did not give the options to Jacob. And so Jacob guessed sort of in the dark. We do want to provide the options if the steal does involve multiple choice. So the fairest ruling by our judging party is a new question will be asked to Jacob for a steal opportunity with multiple choice worth okay. one point. So this is that opportunity for a point with multiple choice. Ken, at your ready. Absolutely. All right. Which actor plays Mendez, the leader of the telepaths in Beneath the Planet of the Apes? A, Victor Bono, B, James Gregory, C, Jeff Corey, D, Paul Richards. Is it A as an apple? No. <laughs> Incorrect looking for Paul Richards. And so a steal opportunity I mean, goes by the wayside eventually, Ken. So now we do get back to Jesse Swift for his sure second question in the world of Planet the of the movies. Apes. Second question coming in. In Escape from the Planet of the Apes, my favorite. Cornelius, Zira, Zira, and Milo are taken to what zoo? I don't want him to get a chance to steal. I'm just gonna throw out a Cincinnati Zoo. I think it's that is incorrect. 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 So a two-point steal I'm opportunity sure on the table now. The Ken's gonna repeat the question Diego for zoo. Jacob. All right. In Escape from the Planet of the Apes, Cornelius, is Zero, there, is there and Milo are Francisco taken to because what Because that's where zoo? most of the movie takes place in. I'm pretty sure it's San Diego. San Diego Zoo. Good zoo, but no, incorrect, incorrect. Looking for Los Angeles Zoo, which I'm a member of. Los Angeles Zoo, it's right down the street. And so once again, we go oh, wait, back it was Los Angeles. to Jesse in what has become a defensive struggle of a ball game, Ken, for his third question in the world of Planet of the Apes. It is, uh, here I just we go. Gotta, I gotta commend Jacob because I looked at that wheel and I was like, great, there's one thing I don't want. This looks like a fantastic <laughs> wheel. 
Number uh, next question coming in. Next question coming in. In battle for the planet of the apes, what is the one word that a human can never say to an ape? No. Multiple choice, please. A monkey. An ape can B, say no primate. to a to a man, C, but a man cannot D, say no, no to an ape. A monkey? No. Incorrect. For the steel, with Kind of give him a guess, baby. In battle for the planet of the apes, what is the one word that a human can never say to an ape? A monkey. B primate. C stop. D no. Ape can say no to a man, but a man Five, can't say no to four, an ape. Three? Is it Six? stop? Yes, that is correct. What? That is Excuse me. Incorrect. 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 Sorry, sorry, sorry. Incorrect. Sorry. <laughs> Too many incorrect. I was about to Too challenge that to for tap a second back and there. Forth. Yes. The answer is no, although I wouldn't recommend saying any of those words to an ape. We're looking for no, and Ken, we remain deadlocked at 6-6. Six to six. It's currently a struggle for Jesse, but Jacob not being able to capitalize on these steel opportunities. Two questions remain for Mr. Swift in the world of the Planet of the Apes franchise. Don't two, look, Christopher. <laughs> two questions remain here. Uh, let me get on the right tab. Uh, I have a garage we can film in if it makes it easier. All right, next question. Which Apes film features the line, it doesn't matter, Apes, humans, your planet, my planet, the universe seems to only reward cruelty with power. I'm pretty sure it's War for the Is Planet of the Apes. Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes 2001. Oh, wait, no, wait. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. That is correct for two points. The big answer like there, Ken. Like, I don't know uh, if it was a Woody guess Woody or if it was knowledge, but that was a big, big answer for Swift. He has one question remaining in this franchise. Yeah, one. That was a big one there. Big final question coming of down. Here. Into some of these in War for the Planet of Speaking the Apes, of which, according to the prologue, how many years ago was the virus created and spread? So, folks, uh, Jesse's camera did freeze. He is back. He was asking for multiple choice the whole time, as we see in the private chat. So we will honor the multiple choice selection. No JTE rules spent. Ken, his multiple choice options are. All right. A, 15 years. B, 10 years. C, 5 years. D, 12 years. So D, 12 years? 12 years. Incorrect. Um, Incorrect. It Another was steal a opportunity game. for Jacob. The question and the options. In War for the Planet of the Apes, according to the prologue, how many years ago was the virus created and spread? A, 15 years. B, 10 years. C, 5 years. D, 12 years. I'm going to guess my original answer, which is 5, because that's the amount of years that have passed from the first movie to the third movie. It still feels like it ten years? too short of a time span. No, incorrect. We're looking for a 15 years. 15, uh, 15 years. years. Too 15 soon, years. Planet of the Apes films. Too soon. <laughs> it feels like it was 15 years for that category, Ken. A lot of questions <laughs> to both competitors. Not a lot of scoring, but the good news for Jesse the Jackal is there wasn't any stealing either. So he does enjoy a two-point advantage. If you spin opponent's choice, you just want to come out of there with a lead of some kind. He's got that. But now we're going to let Jesse relax while we throw it over to Jacob and his manager, Sam Levine. Uh, all right. So look, we had some steal opportunities. We couldn't capitalize on them. And that's okay. The much more important thing is I'm going to – I'm just going to say – I. I think he got two points by, yeah, just sort of picking out a bat, but that's fine. Two yeah. points is two points. It is still on the board, uh, but that was a terrifically contained round two for the opposition. So right. right now, what you need to do is put some points up on the board and capitalize on going second. Uh, they have given you a tremendous advantage here, okay? You are only down two points. You can go multiple choice on every single question and still come out with the lead. Mm -hmm. So I want you to make sure that you know you have that option 
and utilize it if you need. And, you know, we've looked at this wheel and we got rid of the one that clearly no one wanted today. So <laughs> Even the guy let's, who thought uh, it was let's good do our thing. Movies. What do you say? And in the fairness of announcers, curse Ken, I have to say, he's trying to avoid opponent's choice here. <laughs> wow. I, I did it's like talking to your pitcher twice during a no-hitter. You don't do I, it, I, Alice. I, I, you I don't do it thinking. once, you certainly don't do it twice. It's, it's two wrongs make a right, right? Oh, no! It is. <laughs> That's Mo Middle Earth! It's Middle Earth! That is it's Middle, Middle Earth. Earth. Middle Earth. Barely, Ken, by the skin of a <laughs> hobbit's toenail, it is Middle Earth. And so, Jacob, do you want to keep Middle Earth, or do you want to risk spinning that wheel again? Uh, I think I'll keep it. All right, Jesse Swift is back, and we need to see both competitors' hands once the questioning begins. In the world of Middle Earth, deal opportunities are in play here in round two. Again, two points per question, unless you need the aid of multiple choice. Jacob, your first question. In the world of Middle Earth, where Ken's planning a honeymoon. In the Fellowship of the Ring, what type of tart does Bilbo offer Gandalf? I think it's carrot, Five, four, tart, three, I don't know, uh, multiple choice. Carrots. All right, your four it's options for a point. Exciting. Is it A, an apple tart, B, a raspberry tart, C, a cherry tart, or D, an orange tart? Maybe orange. Maybe that's how I got confused with the carrot. I remember something orangey. Is it an apple tart? Four. I didn't know they had apples in Middle Earth, but. That is correct for a big point there. Multiple choices his way, and he cuts the lead of Swift in half. It's now just a one-point advantage for the Jackal over the Wonder. Your next question, Wonder. In the Lord of the Rings, the two towers. Realizing they need a guide, what location does Frodo convince Gollum to lead both him and Sam to? Dang it. The Black Gate is correct yes, for a yes, big yes, two yes, points. Yes. He didn't need wow. multiple choice, Ken. So now wow. he takes the lead over Swift. I it is nine it to it, eight. So, uh, and your next question, third in the world of Middle Earth. In the Battle of the Five Armies, which possession does Bilbo take from Lobelia as he returns to his home at the end of the film? Sword? Five. Four? No, Multiple three. choice. All uh, right, your four options for a point. Is it A, an armchair, B, a glory box, C, spoons, or D, tea cozies? Is it spoons? Spoons, yeah. I Don't want to know what a glory box is. Spoons is correct I was for a big a glory point. Box, it I is now I... 10 and to 8 in favor of the wonder over the Jackal. Two questions remain in Middle Earth. Your penultimate question, Jacob. In an unexpected journey, according to Smeagol slash Gollum, how many teeth does he have? It was one of the, well, it was one of the riddles. Uh, it was, Four, uh, three. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Your four options for a point. Is it A7, B8, C9, or D10? Nine. Dentistry, a big topic of conversation pre-show. And that is correct for another point. It's 11 to 8. And Ken, he's just Damn multiple so choicing away. Rough. He's money balling away, but he's got a three-point lead. Work the walk. Get on base. It's all you need. All right. And here we go with your final question in the world of Middle Earth for two more points. In the Fellowship of the Ring, according to Gandalf, how long will it take to travel through the Mines of Moria? Multiple choice. All right, your four options. Is it A, two days, B, four days, C, six days, or D, one week? I think it's one week. I was going to say one week before you ask for multiple choice. I'm sticking to one week for now. 
five, four, three, two, six days. Great multiple choice maneuvering until this question. That is a miss. Mm. So I'm going to repeat the question and the options for Swift for a possible steal. In the Fellowship of the Ring, according to Gandalf, how long will it take to travel through the mines of Moria? Is it A, two days, B, four days, C, six days, or D, one week? Is it A, two days? Unfortunately, like America, we'll meet you in the middle. Four <laughs> days is the answer. Four days. And so, Ken, it is a rare defensive struggle in the inner geekdom, but the bottom line is both these competitors still within range of that all-important first win. It is 11 to 8, the wonder over the jackal, as we go into round number three. This is the round that will determine the match. In round number three, we need a series of numbers from each competitor. These numbers may range from 1 to 16. We need three numbers from each of you because each number corresponds to a unique category of inner geekdom mystery. Your first question is worth two points. Your next question, three points. Your final question is worth five big points. JTE rules and challenges still in play. Before we meet their managers, we're going to get those numbers from 1 to 16. First, Jacob, you enjoy a three-point lead from 1 to 16. What feels fortunate for Whitney Ben? Um, I'm going to go with uh, 6, 8, and 12. 6, 8, and 12. I'll be asking you your series of questions. Ken will be asking Jesse. Jesse, your lucky numbers are? Uh, 9, 5, and 3. 9, 5, and 3 it is. And now let's meet the manager of the usual suspect. All right, look, look. I don't care about correct answers, incorrect answers, steals, whatever. The bottom line is you have a three-point lead going into the third round. I don't care what the totals are. I just care about the deficit, and it's three points to them. That is great news for us because he is going to have to answer a minimum of two questions to kick it back to you. Okay? Right. You've got two out of your three repeats left, I think. No? Yep. One, maybe? Yep. One or two? I don't know. Two. Okay, you got two left, and uh, I I just, uh, I believe in you, man. So utilize those if you need them. Take the time. Tank if you need to. Uh, I know you've got this in you. Take deep breaths and uh, use the force, or whatever the nerds say. <laughs> it's Sam. What? I, it's Sam's <laughs> here. Whoops. Jesse, no, 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 none of that. None of that. Listen to me. Focus up. We are three points behind after a I devastating was. only deal we don't want on the, the slice sign. match. You just showed why you're in this division. That is an appropriate sign, sir. No whoops. I'm not hearing it. You just got the only thing we didn't want and still are only three points behind. I am not accepting that. You're about to win this because you only need to get a two and a three and you know your stuff. We got a very tricky hand dealt to us. Now we're about to show why we're in this division, why you're in this division. No whoops. Talk to me. We prefer quirky to tricky, but sometimes that's the hand you're dealt. So, yeah, you know, um, and I thought, I was like, okay, well, there's got to at least be some of the new ones, right? Because I feel pretty confident about the new apes. I watched them very recently as part of the study, and uh, no, we didn't get that. The so good that's... thing is, we got that done, so now we're not statistically likely to get apes questions. We're only three behind. Get your two, get your three, win this thing. You've got all your JTEs. Take your time, get out of your head. It's not over till it's over. It is in fact, not even close to over. Three points, bro, that's nothing. Love statistics. All right, Koi, thank you for the pep talk. Ready to go. Get those twos, get those three, get a five. You got this, let's dance. Ten points, we're here for it. All right, Ken, the Jackal selected number nine for his two point category. What world is he looking at? Oh, the dark, moody, and sometimes powy wowie zowie of Batman. Hmm. Here we go. Nice. I like You'll it. find Ed Begley Jr. and Drew Barrymore in which Batman film? Uh, that oh, would be uh, Batman, 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 Batman Forever, yeah. Batman Scratch Forever. Two points. Wait. Two points right there. Two points. He cuts the lead Ooh, of the Wonder to one. And so we stick with the Jackal for his three point question. This could give him a two point lead. And can he select a number five one of the, for his uh, three-pointer? Uh, Correct. Number five in, um, is in the category of fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Three-point question. Who plays Tars Tarkas, the Jeddak of the Tarks, in John Carter? Is 
Is that William clue? Defoe? Sorry. That's right. He did say Willem Dafoe was Willem his Defoe. answer. And that is correct. That's correct. Yes! Eight, three points. And so now it is a lead for the Jackal. He successfully avoided a TKO. And so now Whitney been forced to answer some questions on his own. Jacob, you can tie it with this correct answer for your two-pointer. Your lucky number was six. And that is in the category of the Wizarding World for the tie. Your question. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, what is the name of the creature that transforms into whatever you fear the most? A boggart. A boggart. Don't boggart my nachos. That is correct for two points. It is a tied ball game, meaning Ken, we are going to stick with Whitney. Been for his three-pointer. If he hits it, he's going to force Jesse Swift into the position of needing to answer his five to keep the match alive. Jacob, you selected number eight. Kobe Bryant, Steve Young, and Cal Ripken's number corresponds to Alien and Predator movies. For a three-point lead, your question. In the film Predators, who plays Ronald Noland, a United States Army Air Cavalry soldier who has survived on the alien planet for multiple hunting cycles? Adrian Brody, I think. The name, the name, yeah, the name sounds familiar. I think it's Adrian Brody. Five, four, and three, yeah, two, context clues. Boyd Holbrook, I don't know, random guess. Boyd Holbrook, um, Boyd Holbrook is Holbrook incorrect. Is in don't call him Larry movie. unless you know him. Lawrence Fishburne no. is the yeah. answer we were looking for. And so now, Ken, it is a tie, so we are going to go so back to the Jackal. Jesse Brody's Swift for there. his five-pointer first. If he hits it, He's going to force the wonder to hit his to force sudden death. Right. He chose the number three. Three is the counting of the number. The number is three, and that is the category of Indiana Jones. Oh, Indiana come Jones. On. We've got a big five-point the... question hmm. here. Jesse, in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indy says he learned Quechua the local Incan dialect from writing with what historical figure? I'm gonna guess... Uh, JTE, please. First In one. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indy says he learned Quechua, the local Incan dialect from writing with what historical figure? Hands up, please. Um, Teddy Five. Roosevelt. Four. We're going to do Just one more JT. Not, All right, he's got one remaining, Kemp. In Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indy says he learned Quechua, the local Incan dialect, from writing with what historical figure? Five. Mother four, Teresa. Three. That is incorrect. Incorrect. Looking for Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa is the answer. And so now it all comes down to this, possibly for Whitney Ben Ken. If he misses, we do go to By sudden way, death. All three of us are tied but if he gets it right, moment. he will experience his that. very first winning sensation in the movie Trivia Schmodown. Schmodown. Jacob, for your five point question, you selected category 12. And that corresponds to the world of heroes. Not the TV show, just heroes in general. Your question. For five points and the win. Which superhero character will you hear say, I'll be there around every corner in every empty room as inevitable as your guilty conscience? Ghost Rider. 
No! Daredevil! Five. That's four, that's definitely something three, Daredevil would say. Two. I beat the question. All right, you have one yeah, remaining. You have to listen to the... the Category movie. of heroes, the question for five points. Which superhero character will you hear say, I'll be there around every corner in every empty room as inevitable as your guilty conscience? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. That's his final one for five points and the win. Which superhero character will you hear say, I'll be there around every corner in every empty room as inevitable as your guilty conscience? Five, four, three, two. Is it Rorschach? One. It is not Rorschach. It is the shadow looking for the shadow, only the shadow, and maybe some of the other Baldwins know. Ken, mm -hmm. did you expect anything less from these two gentlemen? It is not the highest scoring game we've ever seen, but what a contest it has been. Defensive though it may be, they're both still in the running for that elusive first win. We now go to sudden death. Ken, your thoughts on the match thus far? I mean, look, Inner Geekdom is always about the details. The fourth film in the franchise, that guy in the background, that's why we uh, come here to watch this uh, competition. Both these competitors are just bringing it in a tough game. Uh, tough game indeed. And so now, gentlemen, here is how the rules of sudden death work. It's a lot like round number one, except the stakes are much, much higher, of course. You're going to have your whiteboards, your pens handy. You have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer to whatever question Ken or myself asks you. The question's worth a point. No penalty for missing a question. No stealing in sudden death. The bigger picture is this. If you both get the question correct, we move on to a new question. If you both miss the question, we move on to a new question. Should one of you get the question correct and the other incorrect, the correct answer or will be declared the winner of the match. You each have a JTE rule at your disposal once again, and one challenge. All right, Sudden Death is now upon us. Ken Knapsack will be asking you gentlemen your first question. Again, 15 seconds to get the correct answer. Ken? All right, your... here, we, here we go. First question. Which actress plays the female lead Roxanne Simpson in Ghost Rider? Ken. You can just feel the tension. It's been mm. such a hard-fought battle thus far. I'm feeling the tension, and I ran out of my heart pills today. <laughs> Five, four, no, three, no, two. Get the question. Wrong answer. All right, that is the first and only JTE rule for Whitney Ben in Sudden Death. All right, which actress plays the female lead Roxanne Simpson in Ghost Rider? I mean, you, nobody's getting buried with JTE rules, so you got to use them while you can. Mm -hmm. And we count down now five, four, uh, three, I have no idea. two, one. Pens down, we go to you first, the Jackal. What did you have? Is it Eva Mendes? And Whitney Ben. I said Jennifer Lopez. Congrats, Lopes. Swift. I, I, I didn't have it. I had Jesse Alba. And your oh, winner, winner, Jesse Swift. Swift. The sign says Inner Kingdom Division. He knew where he was playing, Ken, and Jesse Swift gets his very first victory in a hard fought match in the movie trivia showdown, Inner Geekdom Division. Toy always has that smile on his face, but I feel like it's just a little bit bigger today. Who needs push ups when you can sweat like that, buddy? Dude, the cardio in this match, that was such a hard fought hour of life. I'm dying over here. I have a headache, my heart's in my throat, it's in my ears. Every part of that match could not have gone worse than it did. It was the the worst case scenario for three it was, rounds. It was worse than I thought it could be. And then I, I saw in the chat, you're like, hey, you knew it was two and three. I knew it was five, two. I know you did. I just didn't want to count on that. I saw your eyes adjust, but I didn't want to get too confident. Like, Dude, I mean, that was more Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, gentlemen, I, it, I'm glad you had such fun, and I, I hate to put that much physical stress on you to get a win, but you accomplished it. We're going to let you relax in the green room for just a little bit. Man, that almost became my favorite podcast. <laughs>
they are just, it's like sometimes you just don't even know how to react after you get your first win, especially when it was that hard fought and grueling. What an exercise in perseverance in being able to grind through a defensive struggle of victory. It may have looked like an early 2000s Heat Knicks playoff game, but Ken, it is the Jackal that gets the win in sudden death. I'm so happy for him. The quirky mercs look like they use a palm trio as a hot spot, and uh, maybe they can get some uh, new internet with the winnings there. Great win. I'm happy for those guys. They're taking two coconuts and banging them together. So now with an interview with the very happy and very exhausted winning faction, the quirky mercs, we turn it over to the great and hopefully well-rested Jen Sturger. It's all you. Guys, I am so exhausted after watching that match. <laughs> yeah, did you bring enough water for the whole class? I didn't, I wasn't prepared to be here for an entire day to watch that match go down. Uh, Koi, that felt like it was like watching a football game in the rain. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what was going through your, both of your heads during that match. I don't think that low scoring of a match has ever gone to sudden death because it was just defense. Like, and I, that's not an insult to either player. It was just everyone being calculated because we all got stuff we didn't know. And I wanna, I wanna tip my hat to Whitnaben because I think he played better this time than he did last time. So he clearly studied, clearly improved. Oh, yeah. And it was just a matter of the questions. And I say this all the time. I said it with the Beth match, the Sabrina match. You can't know everything. It's just not possible. We got everything we were worried about. The problem was this was the stuff, it felt like when Mark said opponent's choice, I know he didn't do that to us, but it felt like we talked about these things, so we did it to us. We were like, as long as you don't get apes, as long as you don't get opponent's choice, as long as, and then everything happened like clockwork. So the fact that Jesse won through defense, the fact that Whit Naben played better than he has, the fact that all of that worked out and we just had an hour long endurance match, that is a testament to Jesse. And I want him to feel that because he's the type to beat himself up. That's why I gave him tough love in that second round, tough love in that third round. I'm gonna give him tough love now. That sign is earned, sir. That sweatshirt is earned. I am not gonna take your dismissive, disgruntled, other dis attitude. You're a merc for a reason, bro. Well, good news and bad news. Like the good news, like with the first match after it was over, I was like, crap, there was like, four questions i had 50 50 in my head i said it's either this or it's this and i was blowing it this match i was like damn i didn't know that dang dang i didn't know that sorry editors <laughs> so uh i mean this time i was just like there are some things there's 300 movies this year and you can only study so much and you study in chunks i have my study group you know we we have things set up it's like i'm studying this and then i'm studying this and then i, I saw the wheel today i was like all right there's one thing i haven't gotten around to shouldn't be so bad it was <laughs> bad it was very bad and that's it was kind of apes was kind of like your stay puffed marshmallow man no and then i thought i thought it was a coin toss too because i was like hey i have pages of notes on the new trilogy great i should be able to get a question none of them were in there and i was like this pj i, I was gonna you, say but you guys weren't playing each other. You were playing PJ Campbell today. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and unfortunately, I have his number, so. <laughs> I'm fairness, sure he's already blocked yours. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. In fairness, you got the only one from the last 20 years. In fairness, like, you got the one from the decades we're in today. So you did get that. So feel better about that. And I also I really I lived through. You love this sport, man. This was such a hard-fought victory. I want you to feel this W because... It would have been a lesser victory if that was an easy win. We we did not expect an easy win. We did not get an easy win. But I want this W to feel like resounding because that was neck and neck for three rounds, Boys, and I'm so tired. That should feel bigger. This should, feel, worse this should feel like winning a harder the match more because it was, man. Interview goes I did not on. wake up expecting sudden death, but like here's a bravo to Jacob because Jacob brought it. He played like a defensively but also aggressively offensive. He said, "I I'm like." He thought to himself, I might know that much, not that much about Planet of the Apes, but I know Jesse doesn't right now. So he just like attacked me with it. And luckily he didn't get any steals. Um, yeah, lucky. Think. And so, yeah, it was just, it was a rough category. Like Mark said, we got the one that nobody wanted out of the way. So uh, don't expect for my next match that's, to that's be able to play the same thing. So you win or you learn. And today I did both. Well, that's all you can do some days. Uh, congratulations on a tough tough victory today and uh i feel like we all need to go shower now because that was a mess <laughs> congrats guys
Ken, I know what you're going to ask. Don't worry. That showering mandate does not apply to you or myself. We're good <laughs> for another week. A very happy and very relieved Corky Merckx in that interview. Yeah, look, I get it. I get the joy. I, I get Jesse kind of feeling down on himself. Uh, if you're obsessed on something in the past, I, I've been there. I'll never forget the name Tivik, a Star Wars character from Rogue One that cost me uh, a return to title gold. So I understand it. You stay up at night, and, and that's why I think you have someone like Koi Round, who's just going to really just uh, keep the energy up. And, 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 and that tough love tough love really did work. And, and you can see where a, a great manager like I'll Koi is. I'll never forget the name Richie the, the Snake. Ken, at some point, you got to get over that's that, Tivik. Okay? We, we, we talk about this off camera. All, all the time you, you you know i i i can finally listen to nickelback again so i think that you should finally be able to appreciate the character of tivik i know i know it just it keeps me up at night and alex damon never returns my calls <laughs> oh get in line with that one so now we move on to where do you go if you're jacob the wonder whitney been a game performance here today he took swift past the limit just couldn't quite get that ava mendez question to force another sudden death query to possibly get him the win. But he played well, and again, sometimes you get into these grudge matches where it's not about scoring a boatload of points, it's just about keeping pace with your opponent. Sam, I mean, look, the best part is you can smile through this, right? Oh yeah. I, I mean, I wanna congratulate Koi and, and Jesse and the Mercs mm -hmm. on what I believe people can only refer to as a decisive victory. A clear and decisive victory. <laughs> no question. And I think that's why I, I, everyone is just so like, yeah, it happened, you know? Uh, what did we learn from this match today? Here's what Take we up. learned. Here, here's, here's what I genuinely think we learned, is um, every player, no matter how good they are, has weak spots. As Koi said, there's no you can't know everything. You can't study for everything and know it perfectly. So I have to tip my hat, my Cubs hat here, to the magnificent PJ Campbell <laughs> in somehow <laughs> figuring out the exact series of questions to ask these two gentlemen to result in a finish like this. That's really today belonged to PJ. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. PJ's not any of the players or the managers. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we should bring him in at some point during this post. <laughs> right. We should interview him last, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but what did we take away from today's match? You know, when you're playing in these type of scenarios, which let's face it, they don't come up that often, where it's just like question after question of just deep pulls. I mean, even for inner geekdom, um, how do we kind of persevere and, and work through these type of scenarios going forward? I mean, look, I, I, we've been studying. I know Jacob has put the work in. I, I, I know he has. I, I know what he knows. I know the wealth of knowledge he has in inner geekdom. And it stings like nothing you can imagine that two matches in a row now, he hasn't gotten the good luck on his side to be able to show that off. Um, but where do we go from now? I don't know. Um, it, it's tough with a, an O2 record with so many players in the league, but I will not rest. I don't rest for any of my players. I will keep pounding the pavement to get this guy another match so that he can show what he does. And I don't know, Jacob, t t tell him what you're going to do. T tell everybody about your, your secret study regimen. Do it. <sighs> oh my goodness. Well, uh... Nice Besides secret. burning down PJ's computer. <laughs> Besides burning down PJ's computer, yeah. Um, uh, two words. Uh, my secret study regiment is Amaru Moses. Huge thanks to Amaru for all of your help uh, in, in all this kind of stuff. You know, uh, really rooting for him uh, coming up. Um, but, man, I also got to tip my hat off to both Koi and uh, Swift especially. Uh, you, know, you, know, uh, you know, Jesse and I, we've been duking it out on social media the past few months and finally being able to go up against them is great, but not going to lie, I'm kind of kicking myself because uh, I'm not sure if you noticed my by my reaction, Sam, but guess what I, my first thought oh, on that yeah. five point question. I know what your first thought was. It was the yeah, I, I saw it, buddy. It I was knew. the shadow. So I if know. I wouldn't have second guessed myself, I'd be sitting here in a different, in, 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 a, in, a, in a different setting, but you know what? That's how it is. And uh, that that's on me. And, uh, you know, I have nothing but respect uh, uh, towards Jesse, towards Koi. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Congratulations, wow. Koi. Congratulations, Jesse. Congratulations, PJ. You three did. Yes. <laughs> Tough loss today, gentlemen. But we will bounce back from this. We will come back with a vengeance. And uh, it's not the last I've seen of you, I'm sure. So just uh, chin up, OK? You got it. Thank you. Here it is.
Jen Sturge, you're always the best at putting a salve on the wounds. And 0-2 is not impossible to come back from, Ken. And you know that Sam and Jacob are going to be excited when they do get another opportunity to prove themselves and their worth in the inner geekdom. But he was a great opponent for Jesse Swift today. Somebody had to take the L, but somebody also got their very first win. Yeah, look, I, I think Jacob uh, has a has a he's looking at his match in a great way, and yeah, you got to go with your first in instinct. I, my first instinct was uh, if I had followed it, I would have been a stag show dancer outside Prim, Nevada. I didn't. Now I'm here, and and you can't look back though. You can only be where you are right here, right now. Sam knows how to uh, how to uh, keep his players control and, and get them moving forward. Concentrating on the training, concentrating on the things that will get you that big win down the line. Brawley denied one of their greatest possible mayors because Ken did not go with his first instinct. And so that's going to do it for us here today in the movie Trivia Schmodown Inner Geekdom Division. Keep your eyes on the SchmodownAlive.com. That is where you're going to go for upcoming live show tickets as well as some possible in-studio taping opportunities that you, yes, you, talking to you right now, could be in the audience for. A whole lot of fun stuff coming up this fall in the movie Trivia Schmodown. So thanks to the Jackal of the Wonder for a great match. Sam Levine, Coy, Jandrew, our head writing staff, <laughs> DJ Campbell. It, I'm being told he's declined an interview, but he did <laughs> have a good time with that joking in the private chat. Thank you, PJ, and his incredible writing staff. The behind the scenes folks working hard for us here at Skybound, of course, Jen Sturger, and you, Ken Knapsack. How about you take us out? Oh, my gosh. Thank you for having me in here. It's a lot of fun. It's like when the Yankees used to bring out Phil Rizzuto for an old-timer's day, and he'd wave to the crowd and say, holy cow, man, it's good to be here. Good to be with you, uh, Mark. Uh, and congratulations to both competitors and to the fan base here of the movie Trivia Schmodown. You truly one of the best. That's it for now. Don't forget, you can become a Patreon member of the Schmodown by going over to patreon.com slash movie trivia Schmodown. Find a tier that suits your support, passion, needs. All right. For Mark Ellis, I'm Ken Napsuck. Mark, did I do a good job? Bye, friends. That's Bye. why he's the best in the business, folks. Number two, Derek Jeter. Number two. Who oh boy. Anyone kidding? This was a rough, rough match. Uh, my head hurts, and I only got 13 questions right in that match, but I mean, I mean, who cares? I mean, as long as that match was over, that's, I, th I think, is the most, that I, I think is the most important part of it. Wow. Uh, it was a lot of, yeah, they said it, it's PJ at his best. Slash at his worst. Uh, those questions were great, but tough. Most of them really felt like five pointers, especially in round two, especially in round three. Well, actually, round three, some of the questions felt a little easier, but yeah, the, those round two questions, I mean, it's to be expected. Uh, Middle Earth has been around for a while. Uh, Planet of the Apes movies have been answered a bunch of times uh, over the years, even before they were added as a category. It's been selected, I believe, at least twice this season, so you're no longer getting the surface-level answers at this point. So, uh, yeah, great job by PJ, great job by, by Jacob, great job by Jesse. A lot of J's uh, to thank for in this match, but, yeah, fortunately for me... The Mercs came out with the win, and uh, just slightly edging that much closer to the top three, to the top top of the, uh, the faction standings. All could possibly change after Collision, which happens this weekend, and I gotta get myself to sleep, so that hopefully I'm well rested by the time Saturday comes along. Because I still have a bunch of matches to go through, and uh, yeah... This was a rough day at the office for both competitors, myself included, but uh, just like uh, the manager said, just like the competitors did, I'm going to shake it off. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the reason I had such a visceral reaction to hearing Indiana Jones is because I recently had a bit of a rough time with one of my matches in IG regarding a Indiana Jones question, which I believe was also a five-pointer. No spoilers, but 
I mean, like I said, go ahead and watch my match over on John Roca's Patreon. It's there, and, uh, yeah. That really is all I can say for that, for that right now, so. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next match. Goodbye. Hello again, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video, because I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time, guys, I'll see you guys next time.